Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another rendition of Mr. Ray's Real Estate. Excited to see everyone out here today. Uh, we're ready to get this thing started. We're going to be talking about the bird strategy, baby. We're putting together the final piece of it, and that is how do you rent the property? How do you get the property rented? Once you bought it, once you rehabbed it, once you refinanced it, we need to get that property rented and we need to get it rented to a good tenant. So let's go ahead and get this thing started. So you know the ground rules. Uh, stay muted during the, uh, the presentation part of the call. Make sure you use the comments section for any questions that you might have. And of course, I need your feedback. Uh, are we good? Everybody can hear me okay? Microphone check. Yes, sir. All right, let's keep... We can hear you. All right, let's go. So um, we are at the point now where we're finishing up the birth strategy. So we've... Uh, talked about how to buy the property, make sure that you buy in the property right. Uh, we discussed how to rehab it. We discussed how to refinance it. Now we're gonna discuss how to rent it. Actually, you will rent it before you refinance it because you have to, like we talked about last week, you gotta, the bank wants you to be, have a tenant in there for at least six months before you refinance. So we're doing it a little bit out of order. Uh, but you would actually rent the property for six months and then refi it, okay? So uh, let's do this. Let's talk about our agenda for today. And uh, we're going to be talking about how we're going to acquire a good uh, tenant uh, for our property. So we're going to say, how do we set the rental rate? What are we going to rent it for? How do we market and make sure that we're spreading a wide net to get the most tenants that are available in the area to view our property. We're talking about how we're gonna screen those tenants, what's the application process, and then how do you select the right tenant? So we got a lot to get through today. So let's get this party started. So, you know, as a landlord, <laughs> this is one of the greatest things about uh, being in the real estate business, the investment real estate business. I'm simply asking the tenants, will you please pay my bills? Oh, come on, somebody, you heard the song. Can you pay my bills? Can you pay my automobiles? Yes, baby, in real estate with a landlord, what you're asking the tenant to do is to pay your bill. Let's, let's say, for instance, there was a conversation I was having with one of the tenants that were looking at my prospective properties. And so one of the first things I'm going to ask the tenant is, you know, before I can lease this property to you, I need to ask you a couple questions. And your answers to these questions are going to determine whether or not I want to rent this property to you. So the first question I'm going to ask is, my tenant, would you be willing to pay uh, my monthly mortgage of $500 a month? That That's, you know, that's kind of what I have to pay in order to provide this to me, would you be willing to pay that for me? And that tenant would say, yes, Mr. Ray, I'm, I'm willing to pay you $500 a month for that. But not only that, Mr. and Mrs. Tenant, I need you to see if, would you pay, you know, my insurance? I need to make sure that this property insured in case it burns down, something happens. I need to make sure that that property is covered, you know, so I can get my money back. Would you be willing to pay that for me? And the tenant would say, Yes, Mr. Ray, we're willing to pay that for you. Uh, I, you know, I know I'm asking a lot, but also, you know, there are property real estate taxes on this property. And, I, you know, if you could, that's only $75 a month. Do you, you think possibly you could pay that for me? Uh, Mr. Ray, we probably can do that. OK, uh, one more thing. You know, from time to time, stuff is going to break. You know, I need to send some body out there to take care of it. And that's going to cost, cost me roughly $75 a month. Would you be willing to pay that for me, Mr. and Mrs. Tenant? Mr. Ray, you're asking a lot, but yes, we're going to do that. Okay, this is the final, I promise, this is the final thing I'm going to ask you. 
would you be willing to pay me $275 a month over and above what you already pay me to make sure I can put some money in my pocket and have some cash flow, Mr. And Mrs. Tenant? They say yes. And guess what? I rent that property to them for a thousand. It happens every day, all day. The tenants are literally paying all my bills and putting money in my pocket. I don't know of any other real estate, I don't know of any other asset class that would do that for you. So that's why I love the buy and hold real estate. It is the holy grail for real estate investment. So let's talk about this thing. So right now we got to figure out what the rent's going to be. So we need to go and figure out uh, how do we determine what the rent is on the property? So first thing I want to do is I'm going to go to Zillow and I'm going to go to rent. Okay. And I'm going to say, okay, I need, I have a property uh, that's located in the zip code. Uh, let's just pick a zip code. I have a property at 73112. I want to find what the rents are in that area. Booze out. And so now, let me zoom in on this a little bit. So I can see that there's properties in here that's, that lease for 2,000, there's one for 3,500, there's one for 1,500, et cetera. I can also put in an address. Let's say for instance, I'm looking for uh, my address, that I, the property that, I, that I've got right now that I'm looking to rent 3721 Northwest 58th. I'm getting ready to rehab this property. And so I want to see what I can get uh, for rent on this property. Okay. So that property um, is located. Let me get this right here. So let me show you where it's located. 3721 Northwest 58th Street. Let's look at the public view. And so we know that the property, let's find out where it's located. So we wanna look for all the rentals that's in between Northwest 63rd, Northwest 50th, Meridian, and Portland. That's gonna be our area that we're gonna be looking for rent. So uh, we know that the zip code for this property is 73112. So we're gonna, Go 73112, 73112. Find all the properties that's for rent in that area. Let's see. Let's zoom in on the area that we're looking for. Remember I said we're looking in between, uh, here we go, Portland. So we're looking between, let's, let's just say Northwest 50th, Portland, Meridian, uh, and uh, looks like 66 down here. There's only one property in here, but there are some properties down here. This one here is for 1400. Let's take a look at it. This is uh, $1,400 for this property. Uh, decent property, looks okay. Let's look at the other one that's for there was one down here for 1100. This is a little bit further down on 36th Street, but that's all we've got. So when you look at the, uh, in this area, it looks like properties are gonna be anywhere from 1100 to 1400, okay? So that's a good start. I would probably rent this property for, uh, let's say uh, $1,200, probably what I'm looking for, right? You, Go back out here. Let's see if I can find another area that's got more rental property. Let's try 73132. All right. So in this one, you see there's a property leasing for 1200 another one leasing for 1900 So basically, you would look Pick out the area, the one mile radius of where your property is, and you just look in there and see what properties are listing for. This particular one uh, is listing for $1,200, two bed, two bath. Looks like it's a duplex. 
too bad, too bad up in that area. And it's, it's in decent shape. So, you know, you're looking at that one for 1200. Uh, there's another one down here that's for 1100. Uh, it's been on the market for 62 days. Also look, see how long it's been on the market. Uh, it's been on the market for two months uh, at that price. It's like a decent property. Yeah. So I would say that the rents in this area is going to be going for anywhere between 1200 and 1400. There's one here for 1050. So that's how you would figure out what your rents are. Any questions? Anybody got any questions on how am I going to determine my rent? Yes, Mr. Ray, I got two questions. The the first one was in the previous zip code we were at. Uh-huh. Um, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. In that previous zip code, there was a house that was within that mile radius that was listed for 700 and I, or 700 something. I noticed you just kind of ignored that one. Completely. Yeah, because it's way outside of, uh, here's what is this right here, 795? Yeah, because it's way outside. It's just an apartment. Oh, okay, okay. So when you click on them, you get more information. Usually if they're that far outside of what I'm looking for, like here's another one down here, 745. It's a two bed. Uh, you know, it's, my, mine's gonna be a three bed, one bath. And uh, I'm looking for something that, that's gonna be similar to that. Same way that we do when we're doing comparison on comparables, you wanna look at like homes, right? So here's one three bed, one bath is for 1400. So this will be more in line with the property type of property I would be offered. So I'll be looking for 12 to 1400 for um, leasing this property. Any other got, questions? Gotcha. And the, the, um, the other one is looking at Zillow. Does it only show you like the, the houses that are currently like, so they're not rented yet. They're just like, um, it's for rent. Rent. Yeah. yeah, but you can also do the ones for rent. Okay, so so there's already tenants living in there. If you can do that, do you ever actually do that, or are you only looking for active listings? Yeah, the only reason, the only reason, only thing I'm looking for is active because I don't know when they rented those other ones. I mean, gotcha. Zillow doesn't give you that information. Once it's rented, it's no longer available on Zillow. So all you're ever going to see is active rentals. Any other questions? All right, so that's how we're gonna set our price. So we know we're gonna set that property right around $1,200. So now you got your price set. Now we gotta find out, we gotta get some, some tenants in there, right? So one thing we're gonna do, we're gonna post it on Zillow. And I'm gonna show you how I post uh, properties on Zillow a little bit later. But I would post it on Zillow. Uh, I put a sign in the front yard and, uh, you know, if I, if I wanted to, I could put a sign down at a major intersection pointing down, you know, to my house so I can get more people, more eyes on the property. The more eyes on the property, the better. But for me, Zillow gets me more leads than, than I could ever say because Zillow, everybody looks at Zillow when they're trying to rent a property. Any questions on the marketing part? So that's going to be your best place uh, to market for property. So let's just go ahead and go to Zillow so I can show you what we do on Zillow. So in Zillow, I'm already set up so I can go to uh, manage my rentals. So I got all my rentals set up. And uh, if you look at my listings, this will show all the properties. Well, all my properties are not going to show because some of them have never been uh, listed for rent in the last 10 years. But anybody, any of my properties been for rent for the last 10 years is going to show up here. So right now, I only got one property that I got listed for rent, and that's the property at 6913 uh, Northwest 133rd. That property leases for $1,700. I'm requiring a $1,500. This is all stuff that I would fill out uh, when I'm uh, renting the property. When's the property going to be available? It's going to be available October 1. Uh, I list the amenities. 
I do a, a full description uh, of the property, telling telling everybody about the property, and then I also have all my pictures. Okay. So if you were to go to Zillow and look at this live, let's go to uh, Zillow Live. I just want to go Zillow Live. Zillow OKC. And then I'm going to punch in my property, 6913 Northwest 133rd Street. And you will see that this property is now for rent. We're renting this property for 17, we're asking $1,700 a month. It's a three bed, two bath. Uh, this is Lila's old house. Uh, so whenever we got married, we didn't sell it. We just went ahead and uh, leased the property out. Very nice property. Uh, it's in a gated community. Uh, Lila did a good job when she first purchased this property, got it at a great price. Uh, we've, I've come in and basically just cleaned it up. Um, didn't really do anything other. I painted it, had the carpet clean, and uh, it's pretty much ready to go. And so that's what it would look like if it's listed here. And so individuals would apply, they could apply right online or they can send me uh, a message, uh, my number, is on here somewhere where they can contact me for info. Oh, they got a little picture of Mr. Ray right there. Mr. Ray with Juice Properties, uh, they would contact me. So any questions on the Zillow, how I manage my rentals? So I've already got a couple of messages on this property already. So I would go and see who's messaged me on this property. So I got two people, Andrew, he actually put in an application. I could go and review his application. And then Mark, these were both today because I just posted this one today. So I'll call them back and get them information uh, about the property. Any questions? So that's how you would get your property rented. It costs $9.99 a month to post your properties on Zillow, but it's well worth it. Did I say a month? $9.99 a week. Let me make, the, make sure that's right. $9.99 a week. Any questions before we go back to our presentation? All righty. Back to the presentation. So we got, our, we, we got our pictures, got everything on Zillow. We're ready to go. Now we're taking calls, okay? People are calling, inquiring, they want to set up a time to view the property. Before I ever let anybody view the property, I always have an initial screening by phone. And the reason you want to do this is because you want to make sure they're a good fit for your property, and you don't want to be wasting your time showing your property to everybody that, that wants to see it. You got to screen them out, or you're just wasting your time going back and forth. So first question I'm going to ask, are you currently employed? Why is that a why is that an issue? <laughs> if you're not employed, you can't rent my property. That means you're not making any money. And also, I want to know where you're employed and how long you've been there. If you've only been there a month, you can't rent my property. You got to be in your current, um, your, or at least have continuous employment for at least two years. And so what we're finding out during this COVID, a lot of people got furloughed. A lot of people lost their job. They got a break in their, um, uh, in their history as far as employment. And a lot of people, I'm basically turning down because they don't show that they that they can show me that they've been employed or receiving income for the last two years. I'm looking for two years of good employment. Also, I want to know what your current income is. If my rent is one thousand dollars, your minimum amount that you can make to get in my property is three thousand dollars. I want to see three times uh, the what the rent is before you can qualify for the property because. If my rent's a thousand and you only making fifteen hundred dollars a month, you don't have you don't make enough money to be in that property. Okay, so I'm I'm going to ask those questions. I'm going to eliminate a lot of people up front. I want to know how much they're currently paying in rent. If my rent's a thousand and you currently paying five hundred, that's a big jump, right? Can you really afford that big jump? So I'm going to ask the question: What you're paying right now, and uh, 
Why is it that you're wanting to move into uh, a property that's double the rent? Okay, got to ask that question. They don't want to know why you're moving. Uh, well, my landlord, I, I don't like him. He don't fix nothing, this and that. That's a red flag for me. That's, that's an indication I don't want you in my... When you start having that conversation with me, I'm basically pretty much shut down. Uh, why are you moving? Well, I'm moving because I want a bigger house. Okay, I understand that. Well, I'm moving because the uh, owner is selling the property. I accept that. I'm moving because, you know, whatever reason, as long as it's a legitimate reason, I'm okay with that. But if you move and just, you know, uh, I've been in this one property for six months and I'm ready to go. No, because you're just moving too much. I want to make sure that when I get you in this property, you're going to be staying around for a while. And I want to know, have you given your current landlord a 30-day notice? Well, no, I haven't given them notice yet. Well, I'm probably not going to let you look at my property because you're not, you're, you're not handling your current lease agreement properly. That means you're not going to handle my, you're not going to give me a 30-day notice. So that's, that's a critical piece for me. Have you ever been evicted? Well, that's a good question to ask. Do you think most people are going to be honest with you? Most people will be honest because they know, for the most part, that's public information. I can find it. Some people try to lie and say, no, I've never been evicted. Then when I go run the check on them, there they are. Oh, no, I paid that. That was a misunderstanding with it. No, I don't want to hear none of that. If there's an eviction on your record, you won't be able to lease from me, especially if it's been in the last two years. How many adults are going to occupy? Well, there's going to be 10 of us there. No, 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 no. Not in my property. There ain't going to be 10. Anything more than two adults, I'll probably try to stay away. Well, we got four roommates and we're going to live together. No, I'm not doing that either because now I got to try to collect rent from four different people. I want to know that I got a couple of adults in this property. Now, sometimes, you know, you have a, a husband and wife and they'll have you know, a grown son living with them. That's fine. But if you got four or five people, uh, adults living in the property, that's not going to be a good fit for me. You're probably not going to pass my initial screen. And do you have any pets? Well, yeah, we got a, a schnauzer. Or we got a little, uh, it's a service dog, all kind of reasons. If you have any pet, you cannot live in my property. I don't accept, well, it's a service dog and it's certified and you have to let No, I don't. If, my, if, if I say I don't accept any pets, I don't, that means I don't accept your service dog and I'm not required to have you on my property with any kind of uh, pets. And then how many children you got? Well, I got 20 children, Mr. Ray, and I'm gonna be over here in your two bedroom home. Oh, no, you're not. We're not doing that. If you got five kids and you're trying to get in my two bedroom pro property, that's not gonna work. I'm not gonna lease to you. So if I got three bedrooms, if you got four or five kids, that's okay. I know you can double up on that. But uh, those are the initial screening. I'm, I'm going to do this by phone. You got to pass all of this before you even get a chance to look at my property. Any questions on any of this? Initial screening. Mr. Ray, you ain't going to find nobody for your property. Oh, yes, I am. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make sure that I'm gonna get the right tenant in my property so I don't have to do this again in the next six to three months. I don't have to chase my rent. I don't have to worry about I'm tearing up my property. I don't have to worry about no pets in there. I know I got a good solid tenant in this property. And that's key for me making sure that I'm getting all my money. Remember they agreed up front, they're gonna pay my mortgage, they're gonna pay my insurance, my taxes, my maintenance, and they're gonna give me some cash flow. So I gotta make sure that they can do that every month. Any questions? All right. So that's step number one. So let's assume they made it past step number one. Now I'm going to set up a time for them to view the property. So what I'm going to do is we're going to set up a time for them to view the property. I'm going to tell them when you get to the property, I want you to send me a picture of your ID. That way I can verify who's in my property. Once they provide me picture ID, I'm gonna send them the code to the lockbox that I have on the door. That way I don't ever have to go over there and meet with them, right? They can just go in, look at the property, do what you need to do, come out, uh, put my key back in my lock box and leave, okay? That's pretty, especially during COVID, I came up with this and this works great for me. 
And then the tenant, if they want to request an application, they'll just call me back and request that application. Any questions on step two? Uh, Mr. Ray, I do, I do have a question on that because I was kind of looking at the the, the lockbox. I mean, do you have do you have cameras? I mean, I guess I'm just trying to kind of wrap my head around the like any like I would think that you would have like potential issues or or something. I guess I I don't know or something. What issues would I have? I honestly I don't even know. Like people maybe damaging something or. Or I guess like in my head, I'm thinking like, I don't want them like like in in the property and then I'm not there, I, I guess. I don't know. Maybe I'm just kind of overly thinking about it. Well, I mean, you can go out there and meet there, all these tenants if you want to, but I don't have time for that. So I'm willing to allow them to get into the property. Now I go by the property. When I'm showing the property, let's say I've shown it three or four times, I'll go by that evening 